Hi everyone, welcome to another Sunday evening listening couch video. Hope you're all doing well. Thank you very much for the recommendations people sent to me last week. I'm making, uh, starting to make lists of things that people have asked me to look at. Uh, this was too short notice for this week, so this week I'm going to be just looking at a few things that I've been listening to under my own steam, but from next week hopefully I will start to incorporate some of the things that people have been asking me to talk about. So um, this week, a bit interesting, I went to uh, Anglesey for a couple of nights on holiday and we stayed in a uh, Airbnb which is a thing where you go and live in someone's house for a couple of days. And um, as always with these kind of places, I always check to see if there's any CDs or anything like that. And um, there was. And unlike a lot of places where you go and stay, where you you, know, you find things like the best of Barry Manilow, and whatever, they actually had a good selection of CDs. In fact, they even had a couple of records and a record player there. So I was very impressed. It was, an, it was a... One of the records they had was the Allman Brothers. Uh, it was extremely dusty, but it was there. So what I did was, what I usually do when there's a good CD collection in a place where I'm staying, is I look through and find some things to listen to. And um, I listened to quite a few things while I was there. Just going to feature two of them in today's video, because they were both things that I thought were quite interesting, things I'd never really heard before, both well-known albums. The first one, actually, was the Radiohead debut, Pablo Honey. Now, I say I've never listened to this. It it's well possible that I did listen to it back in the day. Um, Radiohead were a band that I respected and liked, you know, to a great degree, in a way. I went to see them live on the In Rainbows tour, and it was one of the most fantastic concerts I've ever been to. But as a band to listen to at home, you know, buying their albums, they never quite clicked with me. So um, I don't know why, really. But anyway, I did listen to Pablo Honey uh, while I was in Anglesey, and uh, I enjoyed it a lot. I was reading about it and um, apparently the song Creep, they had to give a, a songwriting credit or a co-songwriting co credit to the songwriter Albert Hammond uh, because they lifted part of the tune apparently from the song, uh, his song um, All the Air That I Breathe was it called? Anyway, bit of a footnote. Um, interesting record, definitely got a bit of a grungy sound to it, I think you can hear, I think it came out in 93 and there's definitely a grungy, collegey rock kind of vibe to it but the songwriting is very individual, very uh, distinctive, you can hear that they've got their own voice already just one of those bands that kind of, they did come out of the gate really already, not fully formed I don't think because I think it was on the bends really that they that their sound fully coalesced but you could definitely hear a lot of potential in that band extremely inventive guitar sounds, such a range of different um, ideas and textures. Tom York, extremely singular sounding guy, you know, with a, a definite take on the world. And I just found it very sonically interesting to listen to, listen to it on a CD Walkman through headphones and was very impressed, um, you know, by the range of songs there. I think what struck me about it, listening to it, was how exciting it must have been to have been in that band, you know, speaking as a drummer. I can listen to that and I can put myself into the drummer's shoes listening to it and thinking, wow, I've really found my place here. This 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 band is clearly going somewhere. A lot of great ideas, a lot of uh, just very interesting songs, melodically rich, quite left field. You know, they kind of touched all bases, really. They had the kind of alternative sound, but there was enough, not poppiness exactly, but enough of a commercial slant to it in order to that it was clear that it was going to cross over. So uh, anyway, excellent record, and I will, um, I'm will i going to get it into the collection as soon as I can uh, get my act together. So there was that one. Now, the other one I listened to, or one of the other ones I listened to, was another record that I've never heard before, but I've heard lots of singles from it and um, you know, back in the day, and it was the album Coming Up by Suede, which was their third album. I think it came out in 96. Now, Suede were a band that I never really got into. I think it was because I found Brett Anderson a bit annoying. However, I, you know, I was aware at the time that they were a quality act, shall we say. You know, I mean, their sound is very indebted on the first couple of records to Bowie and the glam scene. You know, they've got that down. Now, this third album, Coming Up, was the first one they did after Bernard Butler, their guitarist, had left the band. The previous album, Dogman Star, I hadn't realised had been a bit of a flop. The singles from it had been a flop, and Suede were being viewed as a bit perhaps a bit washed up. They auditioned for a new guitarist and they got this young guy called Richard Oakes who'd been a fan of the band. He was only about 16 at the time or something. I can remember very clearly reading in the Melody Maker back in the day or the enemy, you know, thinking, wow, this guy's really landed on his feet. What an amazing break. And so they reformed with Richard Oakes and um, 
to Brett Anderson as the songwriter, as the new songwriting team, and they came up with this album coming up, which is a very interesting record to hear in retrospect. It's very poppy. Uh, it's got a kind of mid '90s sound, a lot of high compression, very very focused songwriting. It sounds like they ruthlessly pared down all the songs and arrangements, trying to get in the charts. Still got a bit of a Bowie, bit of a glam edge to it. Lyrically, very interesting. Brett Anderson was very keen. I think he was a bit of a post Morrissey songwriter. You know, he wrote, he liked to write about the suburbs and these kind of wastelands in England where people were kind of living these nowhere lives. You know, and he was quite good at writing about the shallowness of celebrity and you know fame, that kind of thing. A kind of bleakness to his lyrics, which was complemented by the music, which sounds very. Well, it sounds quite alien, it sounds quite strange, you know. He's got this permanent effect on his voice, this kind of strange... I don't know how you describe it, really. Just high compression, I think, probably. And um, the guitars are very crisp, very um, very nuanced, you know, lots of different textures, but uh, they kind of crackle, really. They've got just a great kind of radio compression on them. And um, I was very impressed, you know, given that Richard Oakes was a 16-year-old guitarist, he he just come into the band and he's he's got a lot of riffs and they're quite kind of angular riffs they're quite inventive there's there's not too much that's very uh, kind of trad rock about them they've definitely got you know what you might call a post johnny marr post smith's kind of sensibility to them you know he plays quite a lot of arpeggios and there's quite a lot of finger work going on but he's also quite good with the riffs as well he's quite good with the the glam riffs but there's nothing meat and potatoes about it and um, I was surprised at how much I enjoyed the record. It's quite short, only 10 songs. I raced through it, really enjoyed it. And um, it's firming up in my resolve, really, that perhaps I'm going to finally, you know, buy a couple of CDs by Suede. So um, that was a nice one to hear as well. OK, so just to finish then, just two things. Well, while I was in Anglesey, I took this CD with me and listened to it for the first time. This is The Church and Sometime Anywhere. Now, I was, I was turned on to The Church by Martin Parrott, the vinyl scavenger here on the vinyl community, and um, he sent me a couple of their records, which I enjoyed greatly. This one I bought myself comes from 1994, and um, the church appeared to have gone down to just two members at this point. It's not quite sure what had happened, but um, they've gone down to Kilby and Wilson Piper. Not sure what their first names were. Let's have a look and see. Um, Marty Wilson Piper and Steve Kilby sang and played on all instruments. This record, it kind of grew, it kind of crept up on me slowly. The first few tracks, I found them a little bit monotone, a bit slow, a little bit um, not that engaging. But as it went on, I, I kind of started to get into it. And the second half of the record contained some excellent songs: Lullaby, Eastern, Businesswoman, Authority. Very downbeat album, very melancholy, very um, introverted, and the melodies kind of they unwind slowly. You know, it's not a the church are not a band that kind of beat you over the head with their tunes. They don't sound in any hurry to impress you, and it just kind of it just built nicely. Some interesting instrumentation as well. I've got a feeling that there were some sitars on this, or some a few exotic instruments creeping through. And um, you know, you've got violin. Uh, there's some female backing vocals. It's quite 90s. There are some drum loops on it. It's got that kind of 90s sound, um, but um, really enjoyable. I mean, the church has such a huge back catalogue and um, we'll have to see how far I can get into it but um, stay tuned there's going to be a video a discussion video on the channel coming hopefully in the not too distant future with Martin all about the church so we shall uh, look forward to that and the final thing I just want to show quickly is um, this this is Future Armour by Bebop Deluxe which I picked up um, from HMV a couple of weeks ago this was the only Bebop Deluxe album I didn't have in my collection I have all of their records on vinyl don't have anything on CD, and this is one that eluded me on CD. Sorry, this is one that eluded me on vinyl. So I thought I would pick up the new nice version of it, and um, it's, it has a remastered uh, or a new stereo mix rather um, on the second disc. So uh, it was nice to hear that. Look at that afro, fantastic. And um, again, I won't say too much about this because I do have some uh, Bebop Deluxe content hopefully coming soon. But um, this is a tremendous record. This was their second album. 
Um, Bill Nelson had reconstituted the band. He got rid of the guys from the first lineup. There'd been an intermediate lineup where he'd used some members of Steve Harley's um, Cockney Rebel. That all fell through. And then he auditioned uh, and got this um, got this new lineup together and made this record. It was produced by Roy Thomas Baker, the guy that had done uh, Night at the Opera by Queen and uh, and Sheer Heart Attack, maybe certainly Night at the Opera. And Bill Nelson was was determined in his own words to make uh, an astonishing record, and um, it really is that. It's just got such style to it, such glorious melodies and just wonderful guitar playing. And um, like I said, I won't say too much about it because I've got some Bebop Deluxe um, stuff coming along soon on the channel, so I will talk uh, in more detail about it. But um, definitely a great band and one that. Um, I see people talking about more and more nowadays. Bebop Deluxe seem to be turning into one of those kind of great lost treasures of British pop music. And um, I certainly enjoy hearing that again. So that's a reissue on Cherry Red Records. Watch out for that if you're down your local HMV. They've done the, um, they've done the third album as well, Sunburst Finish. In fact, I've got that one too, but uh, I need to give that a couple more listens before I talk about it. So that's it for this week. Like I said, thank you for your recommendations so far. Please keep sending them along. I'm going to be drawing up lists of things, starting to get into them. So uh, you might need to be a little bit patient waiting for your, your request to come up, but um, you know, rest assured it will. Um, there's only two provisos really for the Sunday evening listening couch, and that is I've got to like the record. I don't really want to be talking about stuff that I don't like. So um, there will be a certain amount of filtering through. I will I will only feature things that I feel kind of enthused to talk about. But uh, don't let that stop you sending in your recommendations. Okay, I don't like everything, but I do like lots of things. All right, folks. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next Sunday for another uh, listening couch experience. Have a great week. I'll see you soon.